Okay, so my name is Jeremy Lamps, and this is the Timekeeper installation guide slash basic demo guide. So we'll start off in the source directory of the Timekeeper code, dilation dash code. And the first thing you want to do is um, make the necessary kernel modifications. So you can do that by simply running dot slash kernel setup dot sh as sudo. Uh, what this does is it downloads the Linux.3.10.9 source code and extracts it into the slash source directory. So that's what it's doing now. Um, sorry if I'm a little quiet. I'm trying to talk loud, but my uh, laptop, microphone, speakers are not very good. So this is install or excuse me downloading the Linux 3.10.9 source code into slash source and when it's done it will uh, make the necessary modifications in, it in order to support timekeeper okay so it's just about downloaded now it's extracting all the files Uh, it's worth mentioning that this is being done on a Linux computer, of course, with Ubuntu 3, uh, excuse me, with Ubuntu 12.0.4 64-bit. Okay, so now the necessary files modifications have been made, so we can verify that by just going to source, slash source, and you see that there's now this Linux with the necessary changes. So now the next step is to compile this uh, Linux uh, compile the Linux kernel. Uh, this is mainly done just with a make menu config, make, make install. Um, this is a very lengthy process, so I'm not going to do it in this demo. So when you're done uh, compiling the kernel, you can come back and watch the rest of this video. Um, I, I have a link in the readme and on the other physical documentation with a, a good site um, explaining how to compile a Linux kernel. So let's return to the root source directory. Okay, so now once the Linux kernel has been compiled, the custom Linux kernel has been compiled, what you next to do is you want to install core. So that's done by just simply doing core dot slash core setup dot sh. And this will download necessary packages and run the dot slash bootstrap dot sh, the dot slash configure, and the make make install. Okay, and now that the core set is complete, you need to compile the Linux kernel module. That is done with by simply typing Python setup module.py. And it will basically ask you one question. It wants to know how many virtual CPUs you want to allocate to an experiment. Uh, you need to do this because Timekeeper basically you basically assign a specific amount of CPUs to Timekeeper and it will use those solely with the uh, containers in an experiment. So let's say if you have eight virtual CPUs, you don't want to allocate eight or even seven. You want to leave at least two virtual CPUs for just standard background tasks. So for the purpose of this demo, we'll say let's allocate four virtual CPUs, and then it will make the necessary modification and compile the Linux kernel module. So you can see that here we have timekeeper.ko alright so right now I just removed timekeeper because it was still inserted into the kernel but what you'd want to do is run insmod timekeeper module dot timekeeper.ko and that will insert the timekeeper kernel module into the Linux kernel likewise if you want to remove it you can just do remove mod timekeeper alright so let's insert it into the Linux kernel and from here we should be able to do pretty much anything you want to do. So just for a basic sanity check to make sure everything's working, uh, let's go into the scripts directory. And here there's a bunch of scripts I have. Uh, the one that I like the most is print time. And what it does is you, you run print time and then the number of times you want it to loop. And it'll loop, do some computation, and print out how long it thinks it took in virtual time, how long it thinks it took in physical time, 
and then the local time. So since there's no time dilation factor assigned to this process, obviously it's the virtual time, which is the process's time that it thinks it is, and from using the, the get time of day system call is the same as the physical time that actually happened on the CPU. However, let's uh, say let's loop 100 times. And so the, the PID is 11323. That's right here. So let's run the script timekeeper <coughs> dilate. And we can say dash P11223. Yeah. 11323. And then the next argument is the dilation factor. So if we give a dilation factor of 2, you now see that. The, the time that the process is advancing is by one second um, as opposed to still taking two seconds of physical time but the virtual time is advancing by one second likewise if we run the same dilate command but with a 0.5 you'll now see that the the dilation factor or er, the virtual time now is advancing at four seconds even though this process is still taking only two seconds of physical time to do the computation because it's doing the same computation so here we see that it's the virtual time is advancing at a at a much quicker rate so cool so that's a, that's just a quick way to verify that timekeeper is working correctly um, also we can do the same thing with uh, core. We can do a similar thing with core, at least. So let's. Uh, so what you need to first do is when you're starting up cores, you need to start up the core daemon. So core daemon start, and then run core GUI. Okay, hold on. Make sure my SSH is set up right. Alright, yeah, okay, so now I can, uh, sorry, I said reconnect for some reason. I'm, I'm SSHing to the box that I'm doing all this stuff on. Alright, so there's going to be a little lag just to get the GUI to pop up, so please just bear with me. But what you'll see if you're familiar with core is we can just create a simple experiment. Just do it two hosts. And now there's some modifications, for example, double clicking on a host gives you the option to set the dilation factor. By default it's 1, meaning don't dilate the virtual time. So if we set this to 2 on one of them, let's just connect them and hit play. Once again, sorry, it's it's being slow just through the port forwarding on SSH to get the GUI to pop up. But, but yeah, please just bear with me. Okay, so it looks like it's just about up. And let's uh, let's open up two two terminals to these guys. going really slow. It'd be much faster if I just had direct access to the machine. Okay. 
So here's the N2 bash, so that's this host right here. Right here. And here's N3, so that is the rightmost host. Right? So, like we previously did, we can run print time 5 and print time 5, and we'll see that N2 um, does not have a dilation factor, so the virtual time and the physical time that it actually spends is about the same, but the other the N3 host has a time dilation factor of 2, so it progresses at half the rate of physical time. So let's run this print time again. Let's do it 40 times on each. And now we'll actually start the synchronized experiment. Okay, let's, and then you just go to Tools, Synchronize Experiment, right here. And when that's run. So now what you see is that the this is the leader task, right? Because it has the highest time dilation factor. It is unchanged. It still thinks one second of virtual time, and it's taking two seconds of physical time. But what you'll notice is now the other process, the process with the TDF of one, it's taking twice as long physical time, but still the same amount of time is advancing in virtual time, roughly two seconds. So what that means is that Timekeeper is slowing down N2 as it's because the, the virtual times are needing to be synchronized. And you can verify that by looking at the local time here. Like it's the same, it's being synchronized, and so forth. So that is pretty much, and then just to stop the experiment, hit the red X, and that is it. So Thank you for watching this demo. Um, I hope it is helpful. If you have any questions, just refer to the user documentation or just ask me. There's, a, there's also a bunch more scripts I didn't mention in the scripts directory. So you can do all the things I mentioned, like you can freeze a process, you can unfreeze a process, you can, you know, you can do anything pretty much just from the command line that you want to, or you can use um, timekeeper functions that's defined in this API right here, timekeepers underscore functions dot h. But that is it. Thanks for everything. Let me know. Uh, just email me at lamps1 at illinois.edu if you have any additional questions. Thank you.